When you think of Spain, some obvious places come to mind. Cities like Seville, Barcelona, perhaps Valencia, or right here in the Plaza Mayor, in the heart of the capital city of Madrid. But the real key to loving Spain is understanding what to do outside these cities. So let me show you some of my hidden gems of Spain. Spain is one of the world's most visited destinations, and for good reason. The sunny Mediterranean beaches, afternoon siestas, world-class food, and of course, wine. And one of the best places to explore Spanish wine culture is in the Basque country of northern Spain. The Basque country is bordered by the Bay of Biscay to the north, Cantabria to the west, and southern France to the northeast. But it's in the southern part of the Basque country, nestled between the Cantabria mountains and the Ebro River, where you'll find Spain's renowned Rioja wine region. There are winery tours all around the world that you can do by bus or by car, or even by foot, but whoever heard of doing it by Segway? Well, you can do it here. Well, thank you. The Aguran Ugarte Winery has been in the same family since 1870. Now run by the fifth and sixth generations, this bodega combines tradition with modern techniques to produce award-winning wines. Most people would be surprised to learn that Spain has nearly three million acres of wine grapes, more than any other country. And the Rioja region, with nearly 1,000 wineries, is home to many of Spain's oldest, like the ones in the medieval town of La Guardia. Surrounded by an ancient wall, the hilltop town of La Guardia looks as though it hasn't changed in centuries. But in this town, it contains an underground tunnel system that was originally built for protection and later became a place to store grapes and eventually to make and store wine. Dating back to the 11th century, Casa Primicia is the oldest building in LaGuardia. You are outside the, the main door. You are not thinking on, on watching such a building and the subterranean cave. It's uh, very peculiar, very emblematical, very historical. And uh, well, it's more than 1,000 years old with a lot of histories, anecdotes. So it's, uh, for us, it's, it's like magic. Gastronomy is spectacular, and of course the Maridas with the wine is, is unique. And speaking of gastronomy, be sure to stop by La Pilar Carniceria to sample a little bit of their special white pork. This is the hunt, but typical from this area. Okay, it's different than uh, the ham from South Spain because uh, the pork is different. Here it's white and the other is uh, black. We dry, we put in salt between 22, 25 days, okay? And then we cover with paprika. This is inside. The smell is delicious. With a piece of bread, uh, it's uh, something special. And when you're done exploring the medieval town of LaGuardia, how about some modern architecture with your wine? Bodega Bagliori may be an architectural gem, but it's the unique way of producing its wine that makes this bodega a must-see. Below the glass cube, with 360-degree views of the surrounding vineyards, is a winery that is 100% gravity-fed. No pumps used here. Winemaker Simone Arena says that it's this process that makes their wine so special. Normally, the process is working with the pumps uh, during the, the pumping over. And then we are going to just use the, the grain to put the, the, the wine in the, in the top of the tank. So we are going to use the gravity in all the process during the fermentation. The winemaking process at Bodega Baggiori may be one of its star attractions, but it's the hotel designed by award-winning architect Frank Gehry that brings many people to Marque de Riscal, the city of wine. Gehry designed the ribboned facade of the building using pink, silver, and gold titanium to reflect the colors of the famed Rioja wine and the Marque de Riscal bottle. But don't let the modern exterior of the hotel fool you. This bodega is one of the oldest wineries in the Rioja region Founded in 1858, they have bottles of wine from every year since their very first vintage. Well, this is the old bottle cellar of the winery, and here we can find bottles since uh, 1862. It's a private collection. We don't sell these bottles, we open them in special occasions. It's not only the history of the winery, what we can find in here, if not uh, 
It's the history of the bottles because some uh, this uh, very old bottles has been uh, hand blown, different shapes. In this part of Spain, wine is just about everywhere, even inside a hotel spa. At the Villa de la Guardia, no, you're not drinking the wine, but the wine is touching you. Here's the deal. About 100 years ago, as they were stomping the grapes in the fields, they discovered that it felt pretty good on their feet. In fact, it had a pretty good effect on their feet. Translation, here comes a spa treatment. There are regular massages and hot stone massages. But what about a frozen grape massage? The wine oil spa at the Villa de la Guardia has a whole menu of wine-related spa services, like wine oil scrubs and iced grape facials. Prefer a slightly warmer treatment? How about a wine hydro massage? The bonus with this one is that you can sip wine and eat chocolate while you're relaxing. But you don't leave the winery by car. If you're smart, you get out here on the Ebro River. It's the second longest river in the Iberian Peninsula. And it's a great way to see a part of Spain that few people ever see. It's about a six mile ride, but one caution. Remember, you're leaving the winery, so watch your drinking. The last thing you want is KUI. You know what that means? Kayaking under the influence. What wine is to Basque country, the olive is down south. Here in Andalusia, the region is responsible for more than 50% of all the olive oil production in Spain. Even more impressive, more than 25% of the world's production. So when you come here, you can't avoid the olive, and you shouldn't. Andalusia is home to some of the most varied terrain in Spain. Sandy beaches, alpine mountains, and barren deserts. But it also contains fertile olive groves that produce some of the world's best olive oil. You have to understand that in Jaén, we have around 65 million of trees. All families have trees, 20, 50, 80, or 1,000. But all people uh, have a life around this tree. So the economy for the economy is very, very important. At Hacienda La Laguna, a grove about 10 miles outside of Ubera, there's nothing but olives. Imagine this, 2,500 acres and 100,000 olive trees. No tour buses here. You tour this grove on horseback. Just like with wine, there's a very specific way to taste olive oil. The professional way to taste the olive oil is to smell it. A good olive oil, you can feel many, many, many aromas on it, and you can feel how fresh it is. You can feel the country, you can feel the grass, the tomato plants, all that aroma standing out. Then the second step, when you take in your mouth and you feel all that aromas and that, that sensation and flavors in your mouth. Wow, totally, totally explosive. That's exactly what I want. I was right. That's amazing. <laughs> On the way back to Madrid, you might be tempted to bypass the small medieval town of Ubra. It's about 40,000 people who live here, many of whom work in the olive industry, but you need to come here. Why? Well, for starters, it's got a great representation of 15th century Spain. But then comes the surprise. What most people don't know, in fact, what most people even here didn't know until a couple of years ago, is that there's a hidden gem within the hidden gem. Ubeda, along with the nearby town of Baeza, was awarded UNESCO World Heritage status in 2003 for the many Renaissance monuments, churches, and palaces along its cobbled streets. But if you don't know where to look, this place would be easy to miss. Imagine the surprise of the real estate developer who discovered an ancient synagogue buried underground beneath a pile of rubble. And then when the restoration, let's say, started, the construction started, uh, little details like arches, columns, capitals started to appear. At the end, they realized that the whole space is a medieval synagogue which preserves its uh, woman's gallery and overall the traditional mikveh. A mikveh is a Jewish ritual bath used for purification purposes. The water must be stationary and contain a certain percentage of water that comes from a natural source. 
underneath, uh, below this floor, uh, is where we had some absolutely hidden uh, spaces. And by chance, uh, they found it, they emptied it. And uh, at the very end, at the very end of all that, uh, they found out that there was uh, this uh, let's say, hole going further down. And when they, once they emptied it uh, from all the rubbish that was filling it too, uh, the water springs out naturally. And that was the, obviously the sign that there uh, was a mikve, because as you might know, mikve must have pure, untouched water. And that is exactly what we have here. We don't want this to be also too crowded. We want it to, to maintain its uh, authenticity, its originality, and the magic of the feelings that you feel as you cross the door here. It's just one of many magical feelings to experience while exploring my hidden gems of Spain.